More and more positive news comes out in the real estate and mortgage markets next. Yes, you heard me right. Even the media can't deny that there is so much positive news out there. And I'm gonna go over it today. So much going on today. Welcome everyone to Real Estate Daily. My name is Troy and every day we go over the latest news in the real estate, housing and mortgage markets. Now, before we jump into this, guys, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, boom, boom. Now, any buyers out there, please, please, I have below, just click down below in the notes, I have a buyer's guide. You can, it makes it a lot more pain-free and stress-free by taking a look at my buyer's guide and it goes over the process of buying a home. It will be a lot more, more stressless if I want to call it. So check that out. It is there. It is free guys. Take advantage of it. Now let's jump right into it. Positive news everywhere. This is CNBC today. Hours ago, it says lack of home listings is taking a toll on the mortgage demand. Hey, I've been saying this forever, right? For the past six months, every time CNBC comes out and says, oh, mortgage demand's plummeting, mortgage demand's plummeting, it's plummeting because there is a lack of listings. If there's hardly any listings, then people get discouraged. They don't want to go out and look for homes. And as we talked about yesterday, the Dreamers program that came out by Cal Hafa, that's exploded. Now we have a ton more people coming out of the woodwork, especially here in Southern California or in California in general. So we're going to see that tick up and we're going to see the mortgage demand as well as home demand just skyrocket, but we just don't have the amount of homes available for all the people who want to buy them. A tragedy that I've been talking about now for two years. Next, home prices increased for the first time in eight months. BlackRock prices rose due to declining rates and persistent lack of inventory. Again, same thing I've been saying. If home prices are falling, it's just there's no inventory. And what inventory is out there are the beat up junk homes that nobody wants, that a seller is over, over estimating that their va the value. That's what we're seeing. So when, it's, when people talk about it's sitting and sitting and sitting and sitting, well, it's sitting for a reason. It's not sitting for lack of buyers. It's sitting for the lack of quality of, pro of, of properties. Let's jump to the next one. As a low inventory to challenge a low inventory, a challenge to housing market as rates decline. Guys, how many times are I gotta say this over and over? I've said it now for six months. Now all of a sudden we keep seeing this. 30-year fixed rate mortgages was at 6.32 as of March 23rd. We are seeing that's actually lower today. We're gonna go over rates here in a minute, but we continue to see that rates are falling. So what we what, what did we see? I'll go over it. Actually, I'll go over it when we talk about rates. Now, guys, if anyone out there has a comment, please leave it below. If you were in a part of the uh, American Dreamers plan where you're being or down payment assistance, you receive up to 20% down payment assistance. Imagine no mortgage insurance. Anyone out there that's listening to this and is has hardly any money but great credit and has a good solid income, go listen, you know, put put a comment down below. I would love to have you qualify with one of our mortgage lender partners. They are on top of this program. They're going to they're going to gift you, well I should say, it's an assistance of 20%. Yes, you still owe it, but it looks like you're putting 20% down. You're having a significantly lower payment. You have no mortgage insurance. It is a fantastic program that is out there. Only $300 million worth. The first week we saw about 50 plus million shaved right off of it. It's probably going to be about a 30 day program. Guys, a lot of people out there, especially the ones I've been dealing with, were never buying a home. They had never had a chance. They only it's gonna be the only time they had a chance to buy the home is in this program. All right, next, home growth, uh, home price growth hits 133 months of positive returns. I keep saying that. I keep seeing that. You know, the national media says this is negative and that's negative. It's really very sectionalized in the United States. Certain areas, of course, there's no home growth. You know, there's no growth of, of property values. Other areas, it just remains hot, and that's what we're seeing. Suburbs are red hot, okay? Inner city, garbage. Why? You know, you have you have less, less law enforcement there. You have more crime. Who wants to live in the city, especially in certain cities out there that are just not being protected? Nobody wants to live in that garbage dump, you know, but 
you know, or homeless everywhere, right? The homeless pop population continues to grow, but the suburbs are red hot right now and continually all throughout the United States, all around these major, major garbage dumps. All right, so let's read what this says. CoreLogic has released CoreLogic has released a new data covering the February 2023 through its home price index, which overall found that home price growth remains in a positive territory at 4.4%, marking 133 straight months of growth. Okay, why do we see all the negativity last six months from the 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 all those media outlets? Because it sells. It's not if you go pick one little thing out of a statistic you can find the negativity of it you're not looking at what the statistic is for we continue to see home growth what is the number one investment for middle america for all americans is property and we are continually seeing it it's not the stock market guys it's not crypto right it is your wealth it is tied a lot to your property the value of your property that's that you own and that's what we're seeing we will see an uptick in march and april i believe we'll, we'll see an uptick in sales we'll see an uptick in home property values or or solds we'll see we'll just see it all the way across the board right it will be red hot again all right optimum blue let's talk about the rates here boom there we go again we keep seeing it I, like i predicted let's go look at the charts here i'm gonna go look at the charts okay so let's go bring this up a little bit this is what we're seeing right uh if i come over here if i come over here right there this is pretty much when the banks collapse right a lot of the banks collapsed right here okay so i i got it i got it Okay, perfect. So right here, we saw the banks collapse. Then what we saw was the reaction to the banks collapse. So what did what, what the federal government do? They bailed out one bank and then let the other two banks go to, go to hell in a handbasket. The market panicked and some of the worst comments came out of Janet Yellen's mouth, including we're not going to handle, we're not going to help all depositors you know, in all banks. So they're only going to pick and choose the ones they think are relevant. So panic, panic, panic. That's what we hit. Maximum panic right there. Listening to the government tell us that it's not coming out of our taxes. A lie. It's not going to be, you know, it's going to come out of the banks through fees. They fee us. It's going to come back to us. It was a bunch of crap. Guys, who's voting for these people? I have no clue. This, they're, they, If they're not doing this on purpose, then they're just stupid. All their MBAs, whatever, all their 400 MBAs is telling me that inflation is here and it's, it's, it's rapid and we're losing jobs. Guys, you blew it two years ago. You blew it last year and you're blowing it today. But so the market reacted and what as it did, I predicted the beginning of this week, we'll see the market stabilize until we see another bunch of bank bank closures which we're going to see it it's going to happen the liquidity in these banks are at zero they have to hold zero percent funds available to the public prior to 2020 they had to hold 10 percent then the big beer flu showed up and what happened we went to zero but then we came out of it and again we still haven't seen this administration bring it back to 10 percent that's where the collapse so now we're seeing more stabilization and now we're seeing it dip hard and that's what we're seeing in the numbers, right? So if I come over here, let's go back, let's go look at these numbers again, okay? So we're seeing, oops, I'm not gonna get it, all right. So we're seeing, you know, we're seeing uh, six basis points down on, on conventional, we're seeing eight basis points down on FHA. Like I predicted, we're going to hit our heads right on 6%. This is gonna to continue to trend down and we're gonna hit 6% and we're gonna see if you shop the rate for FHA, it's gonna be the mid fives and everyone's gonna get excited again. And now we're bringing in more people into this market. So, well guys, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, but you get the picture and you get the point. Thank you very much for joining us today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, you guys have a fantastic day. 
Peace.